see uh, climate is a little bit uh, tougher topic for children but if we handle it in a very careful manner in an effective manner it will become the easiest chapter what is your feeling about this chapter how do you find uh or any difficulties do you face while teaching the chapter climate it takes some time for the students to understand sir we have to explain it properly actually yeah yes, yes. If properly explained it. this chapter becomes yes. very interesting no sir then only they will understand yes yeah. yes sir pressure but actually it is an easy chapter easy chapter easy the way chapter. we are presenting is very important very very important okay so before you go into the chapter you need to make the children thorough in few things the first important thing is you know relationship between temperature and pressure the children must know what is actually temperature anybody if somebody ask uh, us to define temperature how would you define hotness and coldness, coldness of a place hotness and coldness of a place yeah, the degree of hotness of air mm. the degree of hotness of air is what we call temperature temperature how hot the atmosphere is the air is that is what we call temperature what is pressure the weight what exerted is, by the, the air Yes. Yes. The weight exerted by, by the vertical yeah. column of air on the air surface. So, weight exerted by a vertical column of air on the air surface we call pressure. So, we need to teach the relationship between these two. So, we can teach this either by giving a real life experience or by doing an experiment in the class. first i will tell you an example for uh, narrating a real life incident shall we go on to it yes sir actually this incident occurred in my village when i was a school boy actually my house during those days was on the banks of river periyar and it was actually a, a very small village very less number of people lived there and most of the people were either average or poor people so we had a neighbor uh, and uh, his house was actually a house with a thatched roof you know the roof was made with uh, coconut leaves you might have seen such uh, houses nowadays we rarely find but those years you know many houses were there with the thatched roof i think you uh, you can visualize that can't you yes sir yeah yes, like sir. a small hut a hut with a thatched roof and the roof was actually made of bamboo sticks and coconut leaves kerala you know uh, people make uh, people those days used to make a roof with the bamboo stick and the coconut leaves so what happened you know one uh, day the house caught fire something went wrong while cooking and uh, what happened was you know the roof caught fire the roof started burning as you see in the picture you know people of the village immediately tried to extinguish the fire we all joined in that effort even children joined in that effort we all took whatever uh, vessels we could take and we went to the river and fetched the water and poured the on this fire but the fire did not reduce you know the roof continued to burn at that time some people noticed the one phenomenon what did they notice you know light wind started moving from all directions towards this uh, burning roof 
the air started circulating air started moving towards the burning roof some people started telling that this is god's curse you see the roof is already burning and the god has sent the uh, the wind to increase the intensity of the fire so some people started uh, speaking like this you know this man might have uh, earned the a wrath of god or what you say the curse of god the god is cursing him the god is actually sending vayu bhagavan to increase the fire so the fire intensity is increasing due to this light breeze people started telling like that but we know that we are all rational human beings so this question you can put to the children we are all rational human beings what would have been the reason behind this peculiar phenomenon can any one of you answer teachers because of a fire that air is heated and it is getting low pressure and moving up and the other hmm. areas low uh, high pressure wind uh, air it is passing to that area very good excellent so this answer we must get from the children so from this answer you know we can interpret many things first one the roof is burning the fire is there so what happened you know the air close to the roof got heated up so what will happen when the air is heated up i already told you in one of the previous classes what will happen if the air is heated up it will be lightweight and a low pressure why why does it become lightweight air air is heated up why does the air become light weighted um anybody else try what ma'am said is correct the air becomes light why it increases yes intermolecular space increases the molecules start moving away from each other i told you already you know these air molecules are like uh, human beings we like to sit closer when it is cool we like to move away from each other when it is hot you can tell to children you know during night a hot night if you are uh, sleeping with your brother or sister your brother will be on one side of the cot and you will be on the other side just opposite will happen when it is summer when it is very sorry when it is winter when it is winter when the temperature is low you know this brothers will be hugging each other and sleeping so same character we can find among the air molecules also the air molecules will move away from each other so when they move away from each other what will happen intermolecular space will increase and density of the air decreases because molecules are moving away from each other and when when density decreases you know that the weight will also decrease so air becomes light weighted so what will happen to this light weighted air it will start rising up so when the air is rising up the weight exerted by the air will fall that is what we say pressure will fall so around this burning roof a low pressure area will be formed and wind air has one uh, peculiar feature you know if there is a high pressure area and a low pressure area the air will move from the high pressure area towards the low pressure area so from all directions the air will move towards this low pressure area because surrounding areas temperature is normal density is high pressure is high so from such a high pressure area the air will move towards this burning roof that is the reason behind the low i mean the uh, light uh, wind moving towards uh, the roof the burning roof so what are the important things that we learn from this example actually first one if the air is heated up the air density decreases and if air density decreases air will rise up 
and if the air rises up the pressure will come down so what kind of relationship we find between temperature and pressure inverse inverse or indirect relationship inverse relationship seesaw type of relationship we call when temperature increases pressure falls when temperature falls pressure rises so this relationship you should make thorough for the children so like this this i have given as an example you can give any real life experience and make the children understand it so from that example you know few things you should make it clear for the children one if the air is heated up air density will decrease because air molecules will move away from each other intermolecular space will increase and uh, when the air density falls air will start rising up so atmospheric pressure will fall so we find inverse relationship between temperature and the pressure now i'll share a video which shows an experiment to explain the same thing okay shall i go on for, go for it yes sir yes sir Hope you have seen the video. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. So we can easily do this experiment in a classroom. Am I right? Am I right? Can't we do this experiment yes, in a classroom? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes, just yes, one more. Yes. Easy actually. Pardon, sir. it is easy actually to explain this yeah, concept yeah sir. but children will uh, like to watch uh, such experiments actually normally they find okay. experiments only in science classes you know so even in social science classes if we can provide okay. such experiments you know children will be happy very simple experiment so it shows that okay. uh, the air gets heated up and uh, the air rises up it's because of that uh, you know uh, what that uh, parachute which we have made with the help of uh what do you say the mask is going up so this explains why the hot air rises up okay because when the air is heated up the air uh, density decreases the atmospheric pressure falls and the air will start rising up so please make this idea clear to the students so that they will easily understand uh, the other parts of the chapter so let us continue now okay so either by giving a real life experiment i mean example or by giving uh, by doing an experiment 
you will be able to explain to the children the relationship between temperature and the pressure okay now after that after that you please teach them permanent pressure belts and planetary winds i think it is not there in uh, class 9 am i right is it there in class 9 permanent no, pressure belts and planetary winds no sir no sir no but that knowledge is enough for the, is needed for the children to understand the chapter climate of yes. course they are learning it in class 7 but seven. do you expect them to remember it when they come to class 9 not at all not at all by the time the seventh annual exam gets over they will forget all these things the memory will be only till uh, the seventh annual examinations once that examination is over the children will forget it so before you start the climate it is better to teach permanent pressure belts and the planetary winds how will you teach permanent pressure belts and planetary winds you can teach it by with the help of you know demo i mean you can demonstrate in the class or you can teach with the help of diagrams you have to draw the diagrams on the board and explain uh, the pressure belts first then go on to the planetary winds so very nicely you know with the help of a number of diagrams this can be made uh, clear to the children let's have a look at it here you find a picture you find all the pressure belts actually first you show to the children the zero degree latitude what is the speciality of the zero degree latitude equal to equal to equal to we call it equatorial region Area. yeah so in equatorial region how the temperature would be hot or is high very, very hot very hot and high extremely hot, hot. Can, you, can you tell extremely me why hot. is it extremely hot in the equatorial region because the sun they rays are getting are direct sun rays it is falling on the they are rays. getting direct sun rays sun rays so direct sun rays will concentrate in a small area and it will give more light and heat this also you can explain to the children with the help of a torch am i right yes sir suppose you can tell to the children suppose you are walking at night you hold a torch in your hands how would you generally keep the torch you will be keeping it in a slanting position am i right yes so that the light will spread in a large area and you will be able to see a larger area but suddenly you imagine that something falls down from your hands then how will you keep your torch in what direction vertically yeah it will be vertically because you want to search in a smaller area you want more light in that area so always vertical sun rays will fall in a small area will concentrate in a small area and it will give more uh, heat uh, and more light so zero degree latitude sun rays fall vertically as a result of that you know in zero degree latitude uh, the temperature will be very very high so what will happen high. in equatorial area can you tell me the what will happen in equatorial high area? Temperature, temperature high temperature, temperature will be low pressure temperature will be low so what will happen to air gets heated up air gets heated up you ask the children like that don't that allow them low. to directly come to the point that pressure will be low you just take them step by step so temperature is high so air gets heated up heated up so what will happen to the air when it is heated up the density decrease so air yeah, air molecules will move ah. away from each other yes air density will decrease decrease ah. so what will happen to the air when its density decreases it becomes lighter and moves upward yeah air becomes lighter and air will start moving up so air is rising up so what will happen to the weight exerted by the air on the earth surface decrease 
air is rising up no so what will happen to the weight exerted by the air on the air surface pressure will come down decrease it will fall and what do you call that weight exerted by the air on the air surface pressure pressure you call it pressure so pressure falls so please go in this questioning answer way with a diagram on the board you can demonstrate it to them and you ask them questions they will come out with the answers so once you teach in such a way the children will never forget it you can tell them zero degree latitude is called equatorial area equatorial area the sun rays fall vertically as the sun rays are falling vertically they concentrate in a smaller area temperature will be very high so air in that area gets heated up air molecules will move away from each other air will become lighter the light air rises up as the air is rising up the atmospheric pressure will be low and what do you call it you call it equatorial low pressure belt equatorial low pressure belt or you also call it doldrum doldrums don't doldrum doldrum means actually a stagnated area okay because there the pressure is low and throughout the year the pressure will be low in equatorial area that is why we call it a permanent pressure belt is that clear yes now from this equatorial low directly you go to the polar high polar area polar area temperature is high or low low temperature no. is low very why very is temperature low. low in polar region because of the ice pole because sun rays are slanting yeah sun rays rarely reach polar area yes, am i right yes yes polar area they cannot see the sun traveling from east to west as we see here for nearly 6 months they don't see the sun at all 6 months it is full dark next 6 months they will see the sun only in the horizon they don't find the sun traveling from east to west rising in the east setting in the west no so polar area uh, areas do not get much sunlight so there the air will be cool temperature will be low sorry temperature of the air will be low so what will happen when the air is cooled what will happen when the air is cooled what will happen when the temperature is low air is high weight high weight. come step by step come step by step weight in this come step by step air is cooled what will happen it become heavy sir because of the uh, come step by step air molecules will come closer 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 we teach it in such a way children will enjoy step by step let them come air molecules will come closer okay. and what will happen when air molecules come closer it become more Space density will... density of air increases yes yes so what will happen dense air will be falling down so when the air is falling down the weight exerted by the air will increase increase so pressure will be always very high that is why polar area always we find the high pressure so we call it by the name polar high pressure belt so we have two polar high pressure belts one in the northern hemisphere and the other in the southern hemisphere is that point clear so after asking these questions you know and getting from the children you can go for the conclusion you can tell that in the polar area sun rays rarely reach 6 months they don't get sunlight at all remaining 6 months slanting sun rays that is why they could find the sun only in the horizon so the air temperature will be low 
so air molecules will come closer so density of the air will increase dense air will come down so atmospheric pressure will be high you call it by the name polar high pressure belt yes. is that clear yes sir yes, okay now we have learned about two one is actually equatorial law and the other one is actually north i mean polar, polar high, pressure high pressure belt, belt. high pressure belt. yeah next uh, you need to come to this subtropical high Tropical. let us see how to explain that you know from the equatorial area the air is rising up am i right yes sir why yes sir why why air is rising up in the equatorial area because molecule air, 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 air molecules are yes yes okay. because the temperature of the air is high molecules high. move away from each other <laughs> air becomes lighter and density decreases so air will rise up. rise up so from the equatorial area the air is rising up this air will start moving northward and southward so air has come up and air is moving northward and southward what will happen to the air air has come up to a higher altitude what will happen to the air air has come to a higher altitude what will happen to air cools down sir yeah why why air cools why air cools when it rises up because yeah molecules come closer no no, no. that no. is effect of air getting cool very simple because temperature decreases yeah, increase in height correct no that we have already learned in a previous class you know the atmosphere is yes. heated by the by terrestrial radiation and moreover uh, carbon dioxide is more in the lower layer so lower layer temperature will be high as you go to the higher level temperature will fall so what happens here is the rising air air is rising up from the equatorial area and this air is moving towards the poles both the directions northern direction as well as southern direction but when the air is moving in the higher altitude air gets cooled because we know that temperature decreases with increase in height so what will happen when air is cooled you ask to children what will happen when air is cooled it become more dense yeah molecules come closer closer and become more yeah, dense yeah density increases and what will happen to the dense air becoming heavier again yeah it becomes heavier then what will happen to it it will come down again it will come down exactly come down. so at around 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude this air will come down so what will happen to pressure when the air is falling down pressure in pressure will increase pressure increases increase. so 30 degree north latitude and 30 degree south latitude high pressure area develops you call it by the name subtropical high, high so pressure. you have northern subtropical high as well as southern subtropical Adam. high hi is that clear yes sir so you ask questions to the children they will come out with the answer finally you give the conclusion from the equatorial area the air is rising up this air moves towards the poles and the air gets cooled as the temperature decreases with increase in height molecules come closer density increases and this dense air falls down comes down at around 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude so pressure will be high in this 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude it is called subtropical high you also call it hot latitude so we have two subtropical high one is northern subtropical high and the other one is southern subtropical high 
So how many pressure belts we have already covered? Six. Six. Equatorial low we have discussed. Polar high. Discussed. Polar high. Polar high. Northern and southern polar high we discussed. And subtropical Subtropic. high we discussed. High. Yeah. Now, next you can come to the subpolar low. You see here we have a high pressure area. What is it called? Can you see my cursor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. What is this called? This this high pressure polar area. High. Polar, polar high. high. Polar here high. we have here we have another high pressure area. What is it? Subtropical. Subtropical, Subtropical high. high. So you already know that from high pressure area the air will start moving. So what will happen from the polar high? The air will move southward in the northern hemisphere and northward in the southern hemisphere because it's a high pressure area. So from this high pressure area, the air will move southward in the northern hemisphere and northward in the southern hemisphere. Am I right? What did happen? It will happen. Similarly, here we have a high pressure area, subtropical high. From this subtropical high, the air will move towards the north and also towards the south. So what will happen at around 60 degree north and 60 degree south latitude, these two air will dash against each other. Which two air will dash against each other? Polar high and the, air from the polar high, high and the air from the subtropical high will meet they will meet or they will dash against each other at around the 60 degree 60 degree north as well as 60 degree south latitude what will happen when air from both the directions come and dash against each other depression is formed how when how depression will be formed Hot and cold air meet. Add each other and it will move again. Two tracks, uh, you know, hit against each other from opposite direction. They are coming towards each other and directly they hit. What will happen, you know? Actually, the front part will be rising up. They come and dash against each other and rise up. This you can show by keeping the notebooks. Two notebooks you can keep against each other. And uh, you just press from both the sides. What will happen? The middle part will rise up. Yes. So that experiment you can show to the children also. So from both the direction, the wind is coming and dashing against each other. So the air will start rising up at 60 degree north and 60 degree south latitude. What will happen when the air is rising up? What will happen when the air is rising up? It will cool down again. It will not cool down. The air is rising up, so pressure will, of course, it will cool down, but the pressure will fall. Am I right? Weight exerted by the air on the earth will decrease because air is rising up. So subpolar low will be formed. So subpolar low is formed due to the collision of air coming from uh, subtro uh, subtropical high and, uh, and polar high polar high so this is how you can explain these pressure belts they are called permanent pressure belts because throughout the year 365 days they maintain that pressure condition next part is actually wind we know that air always moves from high pressure area towards low pressure area. And that movement is what we call wind. Can anyone define wind? The movement of air. From the air is called wind. wind. Yes. Horizontal air. Yes, horizontal movement of air. Mm. If it is vertical movement, we sometimes call it air current. Air currents. Yes. yes, but but horizontal movement of air we call wind. Can you tell me how is a wind normally named? 
breeze from start it's possible. no no how is a wind generally named how do we give it give a name to it based on the directions and season uh, mostly based on the direction from direction which it, it comes blows. mostly based on the direction from which it blows for example from the east if the wind blows we call it easterly uh, west, west if the wind blows we call it westerly westerly okay now here we have a low pressure area what do you call it you ask children like this we have a low pressure area here what do you call it equatorial low pressure equatorial low pressure or you call it doldrums and here we have a high pressure area both the both the hemisphere what do you call it subtropical high pressure subtropical high so won't the wind blow from subtropical high to equatorial low it blows sir. yes the wind east. will blow and the wind will blow from the northeastern direction actually this direction is influenced by the rotation of the earth the earth is rotating no it's due to the effect of the rotation of the earth that the wind blows from northeastern direction are you able to follow that is why we call it northeast winds we call it trade winds can you tell me why is it called a trade winds anybody why is this wind called a trade winds because during the ancient time it helps the arab sailors to sail around northern hemisphere from the northeastern direction southern hemisphere from the southeastern direction so we have two trade winds actually northeast trade wind and southeast okay. trade wind dear teachers most of the teachers of have this wrong idea about the word trade actually it has nothing to do with the buying and selling of goods it has nothing to do with the arab sailing and all actually this word trade originated from the german word tread which means constant direction track we can also call it track what is the speciality of a running track you run on a track you will be always in the same direction am i right yeah. so actually this word trade originated from the german word tread which means track or constant direction now tell me why do we call these winds trade winds because it blows only in a direction constant direction throughout the year throughout the year they blow in the same direction yes in the northern hemisphere from northeast to direction in the southern hemisphere from south to east direction they don't change their direction at all northern hemisphere northeastern direction southern hemisphere southeastern North direction East. that is why we call these winds trade winds trade winds clear to you yes sir okay so why are they called trade winds because the word trade originated from the german word tread german word track or constant direction these winds blow throughout the year in the same direction so we call them by the name trade winds so we have northeast trade winds as well as southeast, southeast. trade winds southeast okay hmm. so after that you go to this polar area polar area what do we have high pressure or low pressure high pressure high pressure, high pressure. what do you call it polar high high polar pressure, high pressure polar. area yes. so from polar high pressure area the air moves towards subpolar low pressure area yeah. always they blow from the eastern direction so what do you call them polar easterlies 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 both the hemisphere both the hemisphere they blow from the eastern direction so as they move from the east we call them easterlies because we know that the wind is always named after the direction from which it blows so we have uh, easterlies in the north and easterlies in the south oh. now here we have high pressure area subtropical high pressure area 
and the southern hemisphere also we have subtropical high pressure area won't the wind blow from subtropical high to equatorial low will there be wind movement yes always from high pressure it moves towards the low pressure so in both the hemisphere these winds move from the west see here you can find this one subtropical high pressure to subpolar low i'm sorry subtropical high pressure towards subpolar low the wind blows subpolar. and both the hemisphere it blows from the western direction so we call them westerlies let me repeat it here we have subtropical high here we have subpolar low and uh, in the southern hemisphere also here we have subtropical high and uh, subpolar low so from subtropical high to subpolar low the wind blows and uh, in both the hemisphere the wind blows from the western direction so we call them by the name westerlies clear teachers yes sir okay so what are the important yes, uh, permanent winds what are the north east and no, south west trade winds first we have trade winds yes trade winds blow from north east direction no, and south east direction yeah north east direction, direction and south east hemisphere and south east direction in the southern, southern hemisphere and they blow from subtropical high to equatorial low then we have uh, easterlies they move from polar high pressure area to subpolar low pressure polar. area the pressure yeah they move from the eastern direction so they are called easterlies then we have winds blowing from uh, subtropical high to subpolar low they always blow from the western direction so they are called the westerlies that is westerlies so i hope you could understand yes sir so demonstrate it to the children uh explain it with the help of questioning questioning method don't go for lecture method go for questioning method keep on asking questions children will come out with the answer lead them step by step so that it will get uh, what do you say fixed in their minds lifelong they will remember it and after that you can give them an assignment to draw to draw watch the pressure bells and to draw the planetary winds or permanent winds you can even call some students and ask them to draw on the board and explain always you know uh, peer teaching i mean students coming forward and teaching in the class will be very effective after you complete teaching call one or two students ask them to draw ask them to explain step by step so that it will become thorough for them this knowledge is needed to understand the monsoon winds so i hope this permanent pressure bells and planetary winds are clear yes sir yes sir next you should go on to the rainfall and different types of rainfall these all you are doing before you enter into the chapter but once they know all these things you know teaching the chapter will become very very easy for you and children will understand it in the correct sense they will understand it in the correct sense rainfall occurrence i already said the story am i right yes sir ah try to make your own stories so the story of a raindrop that i already gave you in a previous class that can be narrated to make the students understand the process of evaporation condensation and precipitation what are these what is evaporation don't feel angry with me like uh, to lower class children sir is asking questions to us just for discussion purpose i know you all know it evaporation what does it mean the process of uh, changing uh, water into vapor yes the water changes its uh, state from liquid to, to gas to gas that is what we call evaporation what is condensation what is condensation gas yes. cooling down of water 
గ్యాస్ గ్యాస్ స్టేజ్ అని ఉంటుంది సే బికమ్ కన్ఫ్యూషన్ యా your point is correct i know that you all know it but when you are explaining to the children you know you go little uh, deeper actually uh, see the air uh, where do you find the uh, water vapor in the air uh, where does this water vapor sit in the air uh, while narrating the story i said earlier in a previous class in between molecules yes in between in the in molecules molecule in between the molecules so water vapor is there in between the molecules so when the air cools what will happen water will come out from the close. molecules will come closer closer each when molecules come closer what will happen the water vapor will not have place to sit there the water vapor will be thrown out in the form of droplets that process is called condensation this droplet will cling to the dust particles and float in the air so that process that the water vapor is shed out in the form of droplets is what we call condensation so you should go in such a deep manner so that children will understand it in the correct uh, spirit so what is okay. actually condensation it's a process in which the water vapor is shed out by the air in the form of droplets and the cloud formation will take place and what is precipitation what is precipitation form of rainfall yeah you just so, go deeper and explain this droplets coming together and forming the water drops when, and when will the out. droplets come together when will the droplets yes, come sir. together again and again it contains it is fully cool when it when is, it is cool, cooling down when the cloud is cooled the droplets will come closer am i right yes so the droplets yes. will come closer and these droplets will join you know they will join together when hundreds or millions of droplets join together it will become a drop can the drop float in the air no why it is heavier because it is heavy so what will happen to the drop it will come down fall fall it will fall down that is what you call rainfall and rainfall is one type of precipitation there are other types of precipitation like uh, no fall no fall no fall drizzling drizzle hail etc they are all other forms of precipitation okay so please explain these three and that you can explain with the help of the story of a rain drop i hope it is clear you see here the wind is coming from the ocean i think you could see the arrow yes sir the yes, wind sir. is coming from the ocean this air contains contains what water vapor moisture or water vapor moisture yes. yeah and on the path of this wind uh, there is a mountain so what will happen to this wind can it go through the mountain no no it so it will start rising up along the side of the mountain mountain am i right yes sir just imagine that here the air temperature is say uh, 40 degree okay and uh, at 40 degree you just imagine that air can carry 20 grams of moisture you always remember temperature and capacity of the air to carry moisture are directly related if temperature is high the molecules will move away from each other 
and the more moisture can be there in the air but when temperature falls the molecules will come closer then air can carry lesser moisture is that clear yes sir. so yes, sir. here 40 degree celsius temperature air can carry 20 grams okay is that okay yes sir now the air is rising up what will happen to temperature decreases decreases here air can carry 20 grams and air is actually carrying 15 grams air can carry 20 grams air is actually carrying 50 grams will there be any problem capacity 20 grams air is carrying 15 grams no problem at all it is below capacity am i right yes sir now the air is rising up air has reached here at this level the temperature is 30 degree so temperature decreases with increase in height you know yes sir so temperature is 30 degree at this height what will happen to capacity to carry moisture 15 it will decrease ah it will decrease so suppose it became 15 grams now what is the position of the air air can carry 15 grams air is actually carrying 10 grams 15, 15 grams 10 grams 15 grams air can carry actually the air is yes. carrying 15 grams so okay. capacity and actual quantity both are equal what equal. do you call this air saturated air saturated air humidity is 100% okay. correct no yes sir now suppose the air goes up temperature becomes 20 degrees celsius and air can carry only say 5 grams so air is carrying more than what it can carry it can carry only 15 grams sorry it can carry only 5 grams, oh, five grams. it actually yes. contains 15 grams you can eat uh, say half kilogram of food but you have eaten 750 grams what will happen Five hundred grams of food you can eat at a time, but as it was a feast, very delicious food, bust out. You have eaten little more. What will happen? Bust out. You will vomit the surplus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. See, you can keep on comparing natural phenomena with the human beings when you teach in the class. See, you are able to eat uh, say ten uh, apples. but you have eaten 15 apples so your stomach is overfilled you will start vomiting this happens to some people uh, after a feast am i right yes sir they yes. will eat more than their capacity then they will go out and vomit so same thing will happen to the earth sorry air air can actually carry 5 grams but air carries 15 grams so what will happen grams. grams will be thrown out shed down mm -hmm. in the form of droplets that is called the condensation so condensation takes place clouds are formed when these clouds are again lifted up the cloud will cool the droplets will come closer drop will be formed and precipitation will take place rainfall will take place so it rains heavily in this side of a mountain and what do you call this side of the mountain windward side windward side windward side windward side gets heavy rainfall you can connect it you know why kerala gets heavy rainfall rainfall because it lies kerala in the windward side of the western ghats yeah it is windward side of the western ghats western ghats western ghats but tamil nadu side the rainfall is low because tamil nadu is in the eastern side yes. i mean leeward side. side rain leeward shadow side, side. Ah, rain shadow region. yeah this area you call rain shadow area am i right 
Yes, yes, this area, the rainfall is less. Can anyone tell me why? The almost all the droplets came out uh, before. Yeah, uh, the wind already the lost the the moisture. Moreover, the here the wind is coming down. Yeah. What will happen to the wind when it comes down? It will heat up again. Yeah, yeah. 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 it becomes hotter. Its capacity to hold the moisture will increase. You explain now orographic rainfall with the help of this diagram and all. In this manner, your children will never forget it. Did you understand orographic rainfall? Or you want me to explain yes, again? Yes, sir. Understood. I'll just summarize. Once again, I'll just summarize. I have told you that, once again, I have told you that from the sea, the cool air, the moist air is coming down. Sorry, coming to the land. On the path, there is a mountain. So the air is forced to rise up. But before rising up, suppose the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. Capacity to carry moisture is 20 grams. Temperature and capacity to carry moisture are directly related. Higher temperature, air can carry more moisture. Lower temperature, air will carry less moisture. moisture. So here 40 degrees Celsius, air can carry 20 grams. But air is rising up. As the air rises up, air cools. And at this stage, it becomes 30 degrees Celsius. Air is able to carry 15 grams. And actually air is having 15 grams. So humidity is 100%. We call it saturated air. And this point we call saturation point. And beyond this point, if the air moves, again air cools. Capacity to carry moisture will again fall. It becomes 5 grams. So actually 15 grams are there, but air carries, air can carry only 5 grams, 10 grams extra. That 10 gram will be shed out in the form of droplets. These droplets will cling to the dust particles and form cloud. When this cloud is lifted up, cloud cools, these droplets will come closer, drop will be formed and drop will fall down as rain. So this area, windward side, gets heavy rainfall. Whereas on the other side, the leeward side, the air is coming down. Air becomes hotter. Air's capacity to carry moisture will increase. Moreover, air already lost uh, moisture on the other side. So this area, rainfall will be low. It's called the rain shadow region. Clear to you? Yes, sir. Some examples yes, sir. to give you. For example, Mahab, uh, Mahabaleshwar and Pune. They are located very close to each other. The distance is very less. But Mahabaleshwar gets heavy rainfall, whereas Pune gets low rainfall. Why? Because Pune is, lies in the rain shadow region, sir. Leeward region. Leeward side of the Leeward western region region gods, region and But Mahabaleshwar in the... Is windward side of the side. western gods. So such questions you take, give to the students. Give examples. And ask them questions. They will come out with answer. And they will never forget it. Yes, sir. 